what is divorce about really? What is your divorce about? If you've been trying to make sense of your divorce, especially an unwanted divorce, I'm guessing you've already spent quite a few hours Googling this question, trying to figure out exactly where you or she or both of you went wrong. If those lists aren't helping, if they're not satisfying you, it's because most of them are just describing the symptoms, not the underlying problem. Conflict, arguing, lack of intimacy, financial stress, lack of communication, even infidelity or abuse, those are symptoms. In this video, I'm going to describe the problem and why it's the number one top reason for divorce. I'm Rachel Sun. I'm a master NLP practitioner and a certified life coach, and I work with men like you, men who are trying to move on from divorce and are struggling, getting stuck in that process. I help my clients finally get healthy, get happy, reconnect to their confidence, and really own their future, creating a life that is rich in connection and possibility. It's my hope and my intention that on this channel and in these videos, I can help you do the same. Make sure that you stick around to the end of today's video, because after I define the problem, this number one top reason for divorce, I'm going to help you understand where it comes from and whose fault it is that this problem showed up in your marriage in the first place. Please comment on this video. I love hearing from you. And I know that sharing your experience helps other people here who are going through something similar. All right. So what is divorce really about? If you look it up, right, you get all the classic lists. There's about conflict. It's about financial stress, loss of intimacy, lack of communication, arguing, control issues, substance abuse, on and on and on. If those lists aren't helping, if you find yourself still looking, they don't feel like enough, there's probably one of two things going on. One, it's not really the root issue. We're just talking about symptoms, not underlying causes here. And two, it just doesn't seem like a big enough reason for divorce, right? lack of communication, lack of intimacy, some arguing, really? Does that warrant a divorce? It doesn't feel like it. Getting to the root cause, the underlying problem, will help you understand why it's a big enough deal to lead to divorce. So let's get down to the real issue that is underlying the conflict, the loss of intimacy, and all of those other things. Most people, in my experience, do not get divorced because they hate their spouse. They don't get divorced because the spouse did something unforgivable, and they don't even get divorced because they fell out of love. Most people file for divorce because they feel alone. They feel unseen. They feel unheard. They feel deeply disconnected from their partner, and they have no idea how to fix it. Now, if your hackles are standing up when I say that, if you're feeling defensive, I want to be very clear. I am not saying that this is your fault. I'm not blaming you for leaving your partner alone or for making them feel alone in the marriage. And in fact, I don't actually think that you did. In fact, I think that you probably feel pretty alone right now. And I suspect if you're going through a divorce you don't want or have been through a divorce you don't want, that you felt pretty unheard, pretty disconnected and uh, very alone throughout that process. So I'm not blaming you. I'm actually not blaming your ex either. But I am saying that this is what divorce is often. It is often the silent scream of one or both partners howling, I am intolerably alone and I don't know how to fix it. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you where the blame lies. And I'm going to show you whose fault it is that one or both of you got to the point where you felt like this in your marriage. The fact is that societal messaging and cultural norms have created a society of incredibly and tragically lonesome people who struggle to feel connected even when they're standing right next to somebody who loves them deeply. Now, I'm saying this is the top reason for divorce. I'm not saying it's the only reason for divorce. Some people do choose to split up their marriage because they want different things and they choose to end the marriage to go after them. In those cases, those divorces are usually pretty amicable, and those people are probably not watching this video. So let's talk about this reason of loneliness, what I see as truly the top underlying reason for divorce that's behind all of these other symptoms, the conflict, the arguing, the communication problems, the lack of intimacy. Why is loneliness such a powerful driver? How is it that something as small as an emotion, a common emotion that we all feel with some frequency is enough to lead to something as big, as lasting, as serious as divorce? 
to understand the power of this kind of loneliness, you have to really understand a few things about the human nervous system and human evolution. Humans are weak. Sorry, even the toughest of us are nothing compared to a wolf, to a bear, even to a prey animal. We're not fast. We don't have much hair. We have no fur, very crappy little nails, right? No claws, no fangs. Everything about us is pretty soft and squishy and easily torn, easily broken. So our only real resources for survival are our big brains and one, one another. We really depend on each other. And through most of our evolutionary history, being left alone was a death sentence. Even with all of our smarts and strategy, we're not likely to survive out there in the world by ourselves. And this is still true today in infancy and early childhood. Babies and small children are completely dependent on others for their survival. So it's logical given that, that our nervous system responds to a perception of being alone with a fight or flight response. Anxiety and aggression are tools that actually served our ancestors when they were alone Anxiety would drive them to reconnect, to find their tribe, to find their people. Aggression would keep them alive long enough to get there, right? That fight or flight response helped us from an evolutionary perspective when we were alone, it helped us survive. But now in modern society, that same response that was so useful for so long doesn't serve us very well. In fact, it's likely to isolate us further. If you are in fight and you lash out at your partner and other people, or if you're anxiously seeking constant reassurance and comfort, they're likely to pull away from you. People don't like our aggression. They don't like our anxiety. Maybe you can see a pattern of aggression or anxiety and withdrawal within your marriage or within your divorce. All of this begs the question, if connection is so necessary for survival, why do we suck at it? Why are we so bad at it? We're going to talk about that in just a moment. First, here's a quick recap of what we've covered so far. First, the number one top reason for divorce is feeling alone within the marriage. Number two, loneliness is terrifying for the human nervous system because for much of human history and even through modern childhood, being alone means you die. And three, our nervous system's response to that life and death threat, the response to loneliness is aggression or anxiety, right? Often we go into a fight or flight response when we feel lonely and that in modern society serves to isolate us even further. So why, why are we so bad at connection if that's the thing that we crave the most on a physiological level? The answer lies in our fast growing society and it's really mixed up messaging. From early childhood, we learn these fairy tales, right? And what do they tell us? Well. They tell us about men. They tell us that men are strong and stoic and gentle and passionate and tough, right? They are not given to easily showing emotion and they don't break down. Fairy tales also tell us about women. Women are sweet. They're loving, they're giving. They put the needs of others, especially their families ahead of their own and they do it with a smile. Women are emotional, men are stoic. These stereotypes deny the humanity of both men and women, yet they are presented as exactly the image that we need to embody in order to be worthy of love. And remember, connection, love, is what the human nervous system needs the most. So when we believe that we have to fit one of these fairy tale ideals in order to be loved, in order to not be alone, guess what happens? Women give and give and give until they break. And men, holding their pain, suffering silently inside until they break. In a relationship, neither partner actually talks, right? We don't put words to the feelings that are inside. To do so, right, to actually talk about it would be to admit that we aren't as strong. We're not as sweet. We aren't as good or as worthy of love as we really wish we were. So we can't talk to each other, right? Because if we're honest about it, we admit that we don't fit these ideals. You're not going to love me. And then I'm really going to be alone. So we can't share our emotions honestly. And we certainly can't talk about the fear of being alone or let being left by our partners. It is an incredibly tragic twist of irony that the inability to be vulnerable with one another 
is exactly what leaves us feeling so completely alone within a marriage. The other person might love us completely, but we can't be honest with them about who we are and what we feel because we've been taught that if we do that, they won't love us anymore. That is the reason why so many marriages end in divorce, even when both partners genuinely love and care for each other. One or both of them feel alone and they don't know how to overcome the deeply ingrained societal messaging that denies their humanity, right? They just can't talk to each other. Instead, they get mad, they fight, or they withdraw and slip away into deep anxiety or depression. Eventually, someone files for divorce. That's what divorce really is. It's not a failed marriage. It's two people who feel alone, who feel disconnected from one another and do not know how to find that connection with each other again. And it's not either of their fault because they've learned from childhood that the very thing that would reconnect them would render them unworthy of love, revealing their all too human vulnerabilities. If you're divorced, it's probably too late to fix this pattern, to go back and, and rehash this, get into these vulnerabilities with your ex-wife, but you can fix it for yourself. You can choose a different course in your future relationships, and you can teach your children a different way of communicating, a different way of showing up with the people that they love. You can learn to be vulnerable and honest, but it has to start by letting go of the belief that doing so makes you unworthy. The reality is that just the opposite is true. Being honest, being vulnerable about your emotions is your humanity. And it is the place that other people will recognize themselves in you. And when we do that, when we see ourselves in someone else, that is what enables us to feel connected, to feel loved, and to stop feeling so alone in the world. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to this channel. I put out new content every week and I love seeing you guys here. Turn on the notifications so that you know when my new videos are coming out and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.